American basketball star Brittany Griner lost her appeal in a Russian court Tuesday to overturn her nine-year prison sentence. The court near Moscow upheld the sentence, calling it, quote, fair. Russia police say they found vape canisters containing cannabis oil in her luggage at Moscow's airport. Her defense team says she had been prescribed cannabis to treat chronic pain. Greiner was arrested in February. The two-time Olympic gold medalist was convicted on the drug charges in August. The White House addressed the court's decision on Tuesday. The president has demonstrated that he is willing to go to extraordinary lengths and make tough decisions to bring Americans home. This administration has done it successfully before, and it will keep working to do it again and bring Brittany home. CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Zhang joins me now. Weijia, before the White House uh, briefing Tuesday, you asked the president about Griner. Let's listen to what he said. We're in constant contact with the Russian authorities to get Brittany and others out. And so far, we've not been meeting with much uh, positive response. But we're not stopping. The president was getting a vaccination there, which we'll talk about in a minute. But that's the, that's the context for that, uh, that scene. Well, um, we should, this seems a little unreal, though. So help me understand that. What kind of positive response is the U.S. expecting while it's actively rallying the world to fight Putin's invasion in Ukraine? Well, you know, John, that was still happening back in April when the U.S., the Biden administration, was able to bring uh, Marine Trevor Reed back to the U.S. and there was a prisoner swap. And, you know, when that happened, I think, um, you know, the world expressed um, shock because of the tensions that you're talking about. Um, but, you know, certainly right now things have changed a little bit. The U.S. has continued uh, to put pressure on Putin, to penalize Putin. Uh, for what he's doing, uh, you know, to Ukraine. But um, as far as any indications that, you know, they're going to go anywhere when it comes to Brittany Griner, so far, as you just heard right there, President Biden himself expressed pessimism. And I was asking him what his next move was. And right now, the ball appears to be in Putin's court because the U.S. has put a deal on the table and asked, you know, Moscow to negotiate in good faith. And they said today that just isn't happening. You, uh, the, the White House press secretary said that the president is, quote, willing to go to extraordinary lengths. What's your assessment of what those extraordinary lengths would be? And remind people what deal is on the table. So right now, it appears that the deal is um, a prisoner swap, another prisoner swap for Americans, Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan, in exchange for a Russian arms dealer that has been detained here in the U.S. for several years, Victor Boot. Um, but the administration is not, of course, talking about the details of the deal and what else might be involved because they don't want to jeopardize it, right? Um, but, you know... It, I, to put it to bluntly, you know, they're asking for uh, two Americans to come home in exchange for one. So you have to wonder what else Russia might be asking for. Now, officials with the Kremlin had said they do not want to talk about negotiations at all until the judicial process played out for Brittany Griner, which is why today was so significant mm -hmm. because she lost her appeal. There are two more courts above the um, appellate court that made that decision today, but it's unclear whether Griner's attorneys plan to take the case up even further. So as far as what more the Biden administration can do, those extraordinary measures, they're really not talking about it. They're just saying that, you know, we've already put something very significant on the table and they're just waiting now uh, for, for Russia to do something. If I could switch gears now, Weijia, a month ago, and we go back to what the president was doing when you talked to him a month ago, the president told our Scott Pelley that the pandemic was over. Today, that event where you were was a big event to increase vaccinations, remind people there's a new booster out. The president at that event said that this is a global health emergency. And if, if America wants to put COVID behind us, you know, we have to keep up the fight together. So the man who said it was over now says it's a global uh, emergency. So right. is he trying to create a sense of urgency that essentially President Biden contributed to undermining? Uh, yes, in short, because, 
you know, we've seen many times, John, President Biden sometimes says things um, that are against what the official White House message is. And, uh, you know, I can tell you that his aides become very frustrated. So when he said that the pandemic was over, there was a lot of cleanup. You know, they had to say, well, he actually meant that a certain phase of the pandemic is over. In fact, today, Dr. Shisha Jha, who is the White House COVID response coordinator, was asked this very question, was asked, why is the president now urging people uh, to go out and get their shots, saying that this is still an emergency if he just said the pandemic was over? And Jha, you know, tried to speak around it, saying it doesn't matter what we call it. That's just semantics. What matters is that people are still dying, people are still getting sick, and certainly the president is still focused on responding to COVID, which is still very much with us. But it is tricky, right? Because I think, you know, officials, including the president, have wanted to express that the U.S. is in a different phase, that we are not in 2020, of March 2020. In fact, Dr. Anthony Fauci himself said that the pandemic phase is over, and then he had to walk that back um, a few months ago to explain that what he meant was that 3,000 people are not dying every day, that we're in a much better place with treatment and vaccines. The problem, John, though, is when, when you say the pandemic is over, there is a message in there that people hear. Um, and so whether you mean it or not, it can have a harmful effect uh, when people hear that, you know, you know, things are back to normal, which, of course, they are not. Weisha Zhang at the White House. Thanks so much, Weisha. Sure.